Welcome to my channel, everybody. If you like, hit the like button. If you like, uh, please subscribe. It does help my channel out a lot. And I appreciate it so much. And I always thank my, prescribe, my subscribers I already have. I appreciate them so much. And I hope everybody's having had a good weekend, a blessed weekend. And good things happen to you. Well, President Joe Biden's complete failure to deter Russia from invading Ukraine has long-lasting implications for the peace and security of the rest of the world. His infamous minor excursion speech and sending Kamala Harris to the region to try to de-escalate the situation was an unmitigated disaster. Now that Russia has invaded the Biden administration as well as most of RINO's rhinos in Congress continue to commit huge sums of money and arms to Ukraine. Although this action is understandable, it is being done without any goals or conditions set for an end point for the United States involvement. Much like in Afghanistan, the conflict could drag on indefinitely. If that happens, it will drain the resources, political will of the electorate. Electorate. It will be unlikely that Americans will support getting involved in any other conflict that interrupts on the world stage. More money going to other countries and no help for us. Mm -mm. Oh, enter China and a stated desire to reunify with Taiwan, which it calls a renegade province. Many observers don't think it's if China will invade Taiwan, but when? Eight Americans sent a letter to President Biden chiding him, C-H-I-D-I-N-G, chiding him, cheating him, or chiding, it's got to be chiding him for his Ukraine response and warning that the likelihood of an invasion of China is at an all-time high because of the administration's actions. Oh, what are they doing? Unlike Ukraine, a poor country that has very little in the way of strategic resources needed by the United States. Taiwan is the world's largest chip manufacturer. The entire world relies upon one supplier. A disruption in the chip supply uh, would be devastating, no kidding, to the United States and the rest of the Western world. The United States has a massive strategic interest in the country. Now, is Biden trying to cut all this out for us? All our electronics, our computers, our phones? Because isn't that what uh, China was going to do? Or Russia? Oh, for heaven's sakes, it just gets worse, don't it? I keep saying that. I get tired of repeating myself. Believe me, I do. No one in the world fears what President Joe Biden would do. His inability to prevent the invasion of Ukraine and subsequent entanglement in the ensuing war may very well embolden China to choose now to take Taiwan. If that happens, it could have a major unintended consequences far beyond the Pacific Theater. The administration must do everything it can to de-escalate and end the war in Ukraine. Every day the conflict drags on increases the likelihood of another war breaking out. You just don't you just don't know what to think anymore. No, you you don't. It's just, I I just don't know. I really couldn't tell you. Well, I'm going to move that one art article up there. Uh Move that one up there. I try to keep all this stuff situated if I can. Uh, let's see here. 
I'm going to mix these up a little bit just so we can get away from one certain person all the time. The incident at the San Francisco home of Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Paul Pelosi last Friday morning continues to generate far more questions than answers. NBC News has now backtracked on a report Sunday that a third person was present at the home with Paul Pelosi, an alleged attacker, David DePape. NBC investigative correspondent Tom Winter wrote in a Twitter post on Sunday that the San Francisco Police Department said the only two people present were Paul Pelosi and DePape. That contradicts a statement made at the press conference held Friday afternoon when it was stated that there was a third person present who opened the door for responding officers. Oh my goodness. Winner had also stated in a report Sunday morning for the NBC broadcast of Meet the Press that a third person was present at the time police responded to a call to the Pelosi home. San Francisco Police Department Chief Bill Scott unambiguously indicated a third person was at the Pelosi home during his statements to reporters Friday evening when he relayed information he had been provided by the responding officers. I also read that this man, De Pape, hadn't hit Paul Pelosi yet and was about to and the police were there watching and didn't do nothing. That's what I read. Oh, okay. When he relayed information he'd been provided by the responding officers, Scott said, when the officers arrived, knocked on the front door of the resident this morning, the door was opened by someone inside, and the officers observed through the open door, Mr. Pelosi and the suspect, Mr. DePape, inside the entryway of the home. You know, there is a few questions, and I'm sure I'm not all alone here in thinking this, because if you keep reading on and on about it, something is not right. It don't seem right. It could be right, but it don't seem right. I don't know. Scott indicated that at the same time, the officers outside the home, when they saw an interior area where Pelosi and DePape were struggling over a hammer, as officers ordered both men to drop the hammer, the Pape apparently took the hammer away from Pelosi and then struck him on the head. The police were right there. Why didn't they intervene and take the hammer away from whoever had it in the first place? Oh. Scott said the officers then entered the residence and tackled De Pape to the ground. At that time, Pelosi had been struck at least once. There are also unclear reports about whether the police responded initially to the Pelosi home because of a call from a third party asking for a wellness check on Paul Pelosi or a call made by Paul Pelosi to 911. Now they said that he did have his phone on and that's how he called them. But he didn't talk to them. He still was talking to this gentleman here. I don't want to call him De Pape. I'll call him De Pape and not gentleman. But uh, he pretended like he was talking to him to give the 9-11 operator a hint that he was in trouble. Because if he would have went and started talking to the 9-11-1 and this guy, De Pape, would have picked up on it, it could have been a lot worse. He could have speeded up his actions. Oh, boy. It appears that at some point, Paul Pelosi was able to call 911. He appears to have told the investigators that he was able to make the call after telling De Pape he had to use the bathroom. His phone was allegedly charging inside the bathroom at the time. 
His phone was allegedly charging inside the bathroom. Okay. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. I never thought about charging my phone in the bathroom. I charged mine in the kitchen or in the bedroom. <laughs> you know, but whatever. <laughs> oh my goodness. But a third party. Well, we don't know. Not until it all comes out in the open. But I bet you that uh, there'll be something there. I don't know. Can't really say for sure. All righty. Now, do you think Harris went with Biden to that whatever place? Lordy have mercy. I don't know. Well, what's this one here now? One more, and then I'm going to go, and uh, I'm clearing off my desktop here. And, uh, Joe Biden caused one disaster that everyone knows Donald Trump would have stopped. Joe Biden's time in office has seen America career from one crisis to another. It did not have to be this way. No, it didn't. But Joe Biden caused one disaster that everyone knows Donald Trump would have stopped. Now, I've got to X out something here. No. President Joe Biden's proxy war with Russia in Ukraine threatens to escalate to nuclear conflict. Even President Biden admitted the world was closer to nuclear Armageddon today than at any point since the Cuban Missile Crisis. Now, I want to say something here, but I better not. American critics believe Russia President Vladimir Putin also launched this invasion after seeing Biden's weakness, especially after the president failed to execute an orderly withdrawal from Afghanistan. But America's allies also agree with that assessment. Hungarian Foreign Minister, oh boy, I can't pronounce this one. The first name is Peter. And the second name is S-Z-I-J-J-A-R-T-O. But there's little, I don't know what you call it, marks above it. Cesarito? Cesarito. Peter Cesarito told the Daily Caller that Russia never would have invaded Ukraine if former President Donald Trump was still in office. We've all said that. Trump could, could make peace. He could talk things out with the other presidents of other countries. They came to, um, what do you want to call that, together what was best for each country. Not Biden. Biden was out and is out to destroy us. I can't picture in the next two years. No. Cesaro told expressed a concern that Donald Trump did as well say that Europe was too dependent on Russia energy sources and that the link between Russia and Europe on natural gas would eventually lead Europe to accept a ne negotiated settlement in the war. The European economic is suffering. Europe is suffering, Cesarato stated. That is why the only solution for Europe is peace. But definitely, peace not will come with this behavior. No, it won't. We all know that. What the U.S. administration has been showing? Why? Because in order to create peace, you would need to talk. You need to communicate. Biden don't know how, does he? I really don't think he knows how. He's being pushed. He does just exactly what the pushers want him to do. He's just like a puppet on a string. And you know I'm usually under very heavy pressure and criticism of why I still talk to the Russians, he continued. 
But you know, I mean, you cannot afford not to talk to them when you are almost 100% dependent on their energy sources and Russia is a reality in Europe. Russia will remain a reality in Europe regardless of the outcome of this war. Cesar To said the war broke out because of lack of leadership in Europe and America noting that had the 2020 election turn out different, he believes the war never would have occurred, and it wouldn't have. I can't say I'm positive, but let's just go that way, because I don't believe it would have. Trump would have went, he would have talked to these people, you know, the presidents, and they would have come to a decision together that would have helped all the countries that might be involved. You know, so you know, what we are de definitely sure about is that if your presidential election had played out differently in 2020, this war would not have broken out. Cesarito noted, as much as I can be sure about things that didn't happen, I am pretty sure that this would have been the case because we are currently, globally speaking, we are currently lacking leaders. Amen to that. Amen to that. President Trump was a real leader, he continued. Chancellor Merkel was a real leader. So what I know is that if Chancellor Merkel and if President Trump had stayed in power, this war, I'm pretty sure, would not have been broke out. So that's why what we hope is that there will be some American-Russian talks in this regard because don't be misled. Don't be misled. This is necessary to create peace. Russian-American talks. Zizarto added. And Zizarto told the Daily Caller that the war would only end if America sat down with Russia for peace talks. Now anybody with common sense, you know, it tells you that this article is head on. You have to communicate. No matter how hard it seems, no matter uh, the difficulty that may have arose, you, you talk it out. What do we tell married couples that get into a tiff? You know, if you're not communicating, it's going to escalate. You have to sit down with each other and talk things out and reach a reasonable understanding of each other. Oh my goodness, well people, I gotta go. And just remember, I'll be back in a few minutes. Bye. So long. I don't like saying goodbye. So long. And give your blessings to somebody else today. That's the way to do it. Be right back.